will never ever be the same again do you believe that do you know that your life will never be the same do you know 2020 is the year that God will do greater things in your life? Someone shout to the Lord. Give him some praise. Hallelujah. Give your neighbor a high five and say, you are my witness. Say like you believe it. Does that neighbor believe in you? Does she or he believe in you? Hallelujah. Do you know God loves you? Do you know he has brought you here for a reason? Do you know he's about to transform your life? Do you know something greater is going to happen in your life? If you believe it, give the Lord a shout. Yes, Lord, we glorify you. We worship you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We magnify your name. Let your power, let your glory, let your anointing, Lord, be upon this house as we hear your word. Holy Spirit of God, reign righteousness upon your people. Let the former rain and the latter rain come upon your people, oh God. Receive glory. Receive honor and receive praise in Jesus name in Jesus name I want you to know the former rain and the latter rain is coming upon your life the devil likes it or not you are becoming better the en your enemies like it or not you are getting better glory be to Jesus glory be to the Lord you can have your seats I want to give glory to Jesus this morning. For him alone is worthy to be praised. He reigns in power and in majesty. And he is God who does great things in our lives. And this morning, I just want to share with you briefly on our theme for the year, restoration and demonstration. Tell your neighbor restoration and demonstration. You can say it like you believe it. You know that lady just came and said it very boldly. So can you say it like you believe it? Restoration and demonstration. Restoration and demonstration. I know we are excited about this theme. I know we are looking forward for God doing greater things. I know we are looking forward for God restoring many things in our lives. And that is a good desire. That is a good expectation. Because the expectation of the righteous shall never be cut off. So the Lord God is just about to do something in your life. And it is only you that is going to be ready for it. And as you get to be ready for it. I just want you to know there are a few things that we need to know about this restoration and demonstration. Let's begin by reading the scripture in the book of Joel, chapter number 2, and verse number 25 and 26. We're going to read it. The Bible says, so I will restore. Can we read together? So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts have eaten. The crawling locust and the consuming locust and the chewing locust. My great army which I sent among you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God. Who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. Say amen. Those are the scriptures that we're going to run with for the rest of this year. But looking at that scripture, before we come to it, it is important to understand how we get to that place. Because for you and me to begin experiencing a restoration in our lives, we need to know where it begins. We need to know how this scripture came into being and why God would say I will restore to you. 
And for that matter, it is important to realize that the book of Joel brings out what happened to the children of Judah. The children of Judah, God called them my own chosen people. They had been chosen as a nation that would serve the purposes of God in their generation. Every generation, God has a people. Every generation, God has somebody that he would want that they carry on the purposes of God. And this is the people, the children of Judah, that God had given the responsibility of showing the rest of the other nations that is a God in heaven. But these children of Judah, they had suffered destruction. If you read it from chapter number one, you realize what had happened in their lives. Before you come to chapter two, it is good to have a background of where the children of Judah are coming from. So they had, had suffered a destruction for four good years. And all of us know, even at a, a destruction of one year, destabilizes you. The few problems that come upon us, they do not give you any stability. This is January. And there are many people that have gone through some, some, some challenges. And they were saying, may January end. But this morning, there is hope for you. Because the former rain and the latter rain is coming in the first month. Someone say amen. So whatever was destabilizing you, it is important to understand that there is a God in heaven who has been seeing and watching over you. And he's just about to turn all things around for the glory of his name. Someone say amen. So the destruction that had happened to the children of Judah was a, a big destruction. Why did it happen? In this you need to understand destruction that we are talking about here. Everything in, in the land of Judah had been destroyed. If you read about the locusts that we are reading, the eating locusts, this, this, those all the locusts that we have talked about in that scripture, you will realize that they had destroyed everything. You have an example in this nation. When people are talking about the locusts are coming and there are many of you that are saying they should not come to us. Because we know the destruction that they can bring. So there was complete destruction where nothing was left. Nothing completely. The children of Judah became men that were being mocked. Other nations were looking at them and mocking them, asking them, where is your God? And the reason was Judah had been set apart. And many people had envied what God was doing for them. But now they get to a place and things are not working for them. And they are being asked, where is your God? Where is the one that you are serving? Where is the one that you believed in? If God is on your side, why are you going through what you are going through? I may be talking to some people who have been looked down upon by your neighbors, by the people around you. And they're asking if you are a believer, how come you are going through what you are going through? Where is your God? How come your God has not given you a job? How come your God has not helped you to take your children to school? How come things are not going on well? How come your marriage is being, is being shaken? How come your business is not taking the shape that it should take? And we, maybe you are in a place where the children of Judah were, where everyone around them mocked them. When destruction comes, many things happen. But listen to me, somebody. There is a God. Someone, there is a God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Because of this destruction, there was a reason for it. And the reason was the children of Judah had given up on God. They had turned against the principles of God. This, this destruction had come because the children of Judah had turned away from God. They were not serving the purposes of God for their lives. They had become perverted. They did not do what was right in the eyes of God. They had looked aside. Why? Because they were used to God doing things in their lives. They were used for great things happening. 
and church of Jesus Christ in our times today. Sometimes good things happen to us. God blesses us and things are working well. But we now tend to forget the God that has done it for us. There are many times, many things have happened. Blessings come our way and we are not struggling anymore. There is nothing to cause an alarm in your life. So we get to a place and we say, after all, I'm a child of God. We get used to God. We become familiar with the things of God. We become familiar with the presence of God. We have no more reverence to the work of God in our lives. We are used to it. We can do things the way we want. And that is what the children of Judah were doing. After all, they were a chosen nation. Sometimes... It happens to us that way because God has loved us, because God ha has blessed us, because God has poured his blessings upon our lives. We get to a place and we forget. It takes me back to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number eight. God speaking to the children of Israel. He said unto them, please take care when you have eaten and you are satisfied. You shall never forget your God. And this morning I'm, I'm here to help you church that if we're going to enjoy the restoration that we are looking out for, we must revisit our lives. We must revisit our relationship with God. Restoration is from God. And this God that will bring restoration is looking for a relationship. He's looking for men and women that will stand and hold the principles of God for their lives. Children of God. Because of what the children of Israel. The children of Judah had done. They attracted judgment. Friends we may do many things. And we may think judgment is too far from us. We may get familiar with what God does. And we may begin to think because God loves me, there is nothing that will happen. At one time, Samson got used to how God was using him. And he just thought one day that he will just wake up, shake himself, and the miracle would happen. I am here to let you know, church, when we begin to, to drift from the presence of God, when we begin to do what does not bring glory to God, we attract judgment. And the judgment we attract, it is a judgment that will not leave us better. And that is what the children of Judah went through. Because of their perversion, because of forgetting the power of God for their lives, they attracted judgment. God punished them. How do I, why do I say that? If you, you go back to the scripture we read in chapter number 25, the last part of it. It is God that sent destruction to the children of Judah. If you could throw it there, Joel 2, 25. Why am I saying it was God? Why could God not just help the children of Judah? In chapter number 2 and verse number 25, the last part of it, the Bible says the army, the great army that I send before you. Why is he saying so? It is because he's the one that allowed that destruction. Are you getting what I'm saying? Church, are you getting what I'm saying? Please, would you throw up for me Joel chapter 2 and verse number 25? Joel chapter 2 and verse number 25. He begins by saying how he will restore. He says, so I will restore to you the years, those four years that the swarming locusts have eaten, the crawling locusts, the consuming locusts, and the chewing locusts. But the last part of it, what does he say? Can we read together? My great army, which I sent among you. That great army of locusts, if you keep reading and understanding, they may not have just been the locusts we are talking about. Those were the nations that were sent to fight Judah. And God says, I'm the one who allowed it. I'm the one who let it, I'm the one who allowed it to happen. And why would God allow that to the people that he loves? Children of God, 
Why would God allow something like that to come to you? God punished them. That is why he say, my great army, which I send among you, they suffered the consequences of their sin. I want you to know, church, sin is enjoyable when we are doing it, but there are consequences of sin. Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Don't, don't fear. It is me telling you. Tell neighbor. There are consequences of sin. There are consequences of sin. However, we hide and do it. Wherever we go and no one knows about it. Friends, there are consequences of sin. And the children of Judah suffered the consequences of sin. Sin looks nice. Sin looks good. But there are consequences of sin. And that is why destruction came to the children of Judah. Friends, it is important for you to know that God is concerned on how we live as Christians. The day you said yes, Jehovah has been watching over your life. I want you to know God punishes us when we sin and we interrupt with the relationship between us and him. A relationship between you and God is a great relationship. Fellowship between you and God is a great fellowship. But when we interrupt that fellowship, God will punish you. When you interrupt it, when God comes to, to have fellowship with you and he does not find you where he thought he should find you. One time, God had created man and the main purpose why God created man was to worship him. Man would worship God, but God comes one time and he does not find man where he's supposed to be. And that is how sin had come to the world. But thank God, God as a father, he's a merciful God. He sent us Jesus so that he could restore us back to God. And I want to tell someone in this house, it does not matter how far you have gone. It does not matter what who you did that was so bad. There is a loving father that is more than willing to restore you to himself. He does not want you to die in sin. He does not want you to suffer and think that God has forgotten you. Dear friends, the whole duty of, ma of a man is to worship God. And that worshiping that God is looking for, he's looking for a man or a woman that will worship him in truth and in spirit. When the children of Judah missed it, they received the punishment, the judgment that came upon their lives. Dear friends, that is why Joel comes into the scene. When he looks at the destruction, when he looks at how things are happening in the lives of these people, dear friends, he comes in and what he does is that he calls people to come back to God. He begins to cry out and say, let us turn back to our God. If you look at the scripture, chapter number two and verse number 12, Joel chapter number two and verse number 12. I want you to see what Joel is saying in this scripture. He says, now therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. So rent your heart and not your garments. Return to, to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and he relents from doing harm. Remember Judah has already gone out of the will of God, but there is a man by name Joel. He calls back the people to come back to God. He says, come back. Come and let us return to our God. A call of repentance. 
That is the call we find in the book of Joel. A call of repentance. God wants us to turn to him with our hearts. All heartedly. Not half-heartedly. God wants us to serve him with all that we have. God wants us to serve him with everything that is given unto us. But how many times do we give ourselves to God and not all heartedly? When Joel was calling back the children of Israel to God, he said, come, let us return to the Lord. Friends, a call of repentance is a call that Joel was telling the children of Israel. We have sinned. We have turned against God. But let us make an about turn. Let us turn around and see if our God will forgive us. And that is what I want to tell the church of Jesus Christ. We might have done worse. We might have mingled ourselves and lived the way we want to live. But I've come to make a call of God upon your life. And the call is come, let us return to our God. Come, let us turn away from our wickedness that God may remember his love upon our lives. Someone say amen. The children of Israel, the children of Judah had stopped praying. They had stopped seeking God. They were comfortable because they had immersed themselves in whatever they had. Church of Jesus, we are living in a generation that we get so comfortable. Yes, we are believers. But we become so comfortable because of where we are. We have immersed ourselves in the blessings that God has given us. We are ready to say, I am blessed. I cannot be cursed. That is a reality. But where is your heart? Look at your prayer life. There are moments you prayed. The moments you cried, oh God, remember me and God remembered you. You asked him for a car, he gave you a car. You asked him for a house, he gave you a house. You asked him for a job, he gave you a job. You asked him for a wife, he gave you a wife. After that, what happened? The children of Judah immersed themselves in the riches that God had given them. They worshipped the blessing and forget, forgot the blesser. And this morning, dear church, we need to revisit our lives. Because if we go that way, when we get a church that is not praying anymore, friends, the power of God will not be in that church. We will begin to say, where are the miracles? We will begin to say, there are people that so great things happen. But are we where God wants us to be? The children of Israel enjoyed many things. But now they are not seeing it. As a church, there are times we saw miracles. There are times we filled our sanctuaries because we were praying. We were seeking God. We were crying unto him. How come our hands have become too heavy? We cannot lift our hands to God. We can only say, God, I love you. Before you get your physical restoration. Before God gives you back your land that has been taken unfairly. Before God brings up your business and restores what you lost. God desires that you be restored back to him. He says before I give you the money. Before I give you that house. Would you turn to me? And Joel has said it. Let us return to God. And church I am pleading. And making the plea that, uh, that Joel plead. He said we may be comfortable. We may be happy. We may be enjoying. But let us not wait for the judgment that came to the children of Judah. It is our time to revisit our lives. And say enough is enough. We want to go back to the power. We want to see the restoration of the glory glory of God in the house. We want to see the power of God working around us. 
We are tired with a church of words and no demonstration. Friends, we are tired with people coming to church sick and going back sick. We are tired with people coming to church blind and we are just telling them one day God will visit you. We want to go back to the days where the blind were seeing immediately. We want to go back to the days the cripples were walking. We are looking for men and women who will look at a cripple and declare, rise up and walk. We need restoration. We need restoration. We need restoration. Friends, let us get tired. Being comfortable in our pews. Being comfortable in our seats. Looking at around when sin has taken over. How long will we sit in a church? Sit with thieves. They steal from us and they go unnoticed. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, we need restoration. Say, I am tired. I need men and women who will be tired. I'm looking for men and women who will come and sit here. And if there is an agent of the devil, he does not get comfortable. We declare with the restoration that is coming, no witch will survive. No devil's agent will survive. No wizard will survive. We need restoration. Church, go back to prayer. Go back to prayer. Go back to the closet. Restoration is coming. It is saddening that the church can be mocked. The children of Judah were being mocked. Why is the church being mocked? You may say ours is not mocked. But when we have false preachers doing whatever they are doing, the church is being ashamed. But I come with the word of God today that the Bible says we shall never suffer shame anymore. We have been laughed at, but no more shall we be laughed at. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Let us go back to prayer. When is the last time you spent time in the presence of God? Oh, hallelujah. It is time, dear friends, we sought the Lord one more time. The children of Judah stopped reading the Bible. They stopped seeking the purposes of God for their lives. They were comfortable the way they were. It may be happening in our generation today. We are so comfortable because we bought big screens. We have no time to read the Bible, but we have time to watch programs. The TV has replaced our Bibles. We can watch programs up to late in the night. But after that, we have had no interaction with the word of God. We are a backslidden people. And God is calling us from our backsliding. God is calling us from our backsliding church. You don't have to go back to the bar and drink to look backslidden. But the fact that we can't read the Bible, the fact that we can't pray, the fact that we have no fear of what God will do, we are living in a backslidden state. And God is calling us. And what is he saying? Turn back unto me. Church of Jesus, why would you be a Christian who spends a lot of time on TV? who spends a lot of time on, on Facebook, who spends a lot of time watching pornography and everything that is evil. But we will still come back to church and lift up our hands and say, these are holy hands. We are living in a backslidden state. We need a restoration. We need God to bring us back to himself. We need to cry out and say, oh God, come to our rescue. God has given you servants who are telling you it is a time to walk right with God. Church, no one will be, will be an, an, a watchman over your life. No one will watch what you're doing. No one will see anything that is happening. 
but I bring a plea like the plea of, of Joel to the children of Judah saying to every one of us, let us come back to God. Let us look at where we, lose, we lost it. We've lost a lot. I know when we talk about restoration, some of you have lost money. Some of you have lost businesses. Some of you have lost marriages. Some of you have lost so many things. And you are saying, Lord, restore. But before he restores those ones, may you be restored back to himself. Come back to Jesus. Come back to the saving knowledge of Christ. Say no to whatever is keeping you away. Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. Come back to God. God is calling us as a church. It is not a responsibility of one man. Church. You cannot look around and say our pastors have no power. Do you have it yourself? Miracles are not happening in our church. Listen, the early church, everyone would do what God has said. And the Bible says, those who believe in me, the things I do, they shall do them. If your pastors have no power, we want to see the power from the congregation. We want to see men and women laying hands on the sick and they are being healed. Someone say, we need the power. Say one more time, we need the power. Friends, power was demonstrated in the early church. In the book of Acts, when the apostles took serious what God has said unto him, unto them, miracles were happening. In Judah, miracles had ceased because they were in a backslidden state. But the people who know their God shall be strong. And they shall do exploits. In this year of restoration, may we get to know our God. May we turn back and repent. Not just say a prayer. Friends, when we lead you into a confession prayer, it is a good prayer. But listen, after that prayer, live according to the word of God. Live according to the word of God. Put aside the wickedness of your life and allow God to lead you into his paths of righteousness. Are you in that category of men and women who are living in a backslidden state? Where are we headed as a people? Are we headed in failure? Are we waiting for judgment? Remember, God will judge those who do not live right with him. You don't have to wait for that. Let us return to the Lord. Let us return to God. Don't just come to church for convenience. Don't just come to church to tick a register. Don't just come to church so that we know you are present. Don't just come to church so that you, your pastor may realize you are around. Don't come to church just because you are a leader. Don't come to church because just you are a nasher. Oh, I am a choir member. Thank you for singing. Thank you for ushering. Thank you for leading. But time has come, church. Let us return to our God. Let us return to our God. Let us rent our hearts and not our garments. Let us pour ourselves at the altar and cry out, Lord, have mercy. Lift up your hand and say, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Lift up your hand and say, God, have mercy. God is a God of mercy. That is why he will restore you. Our God is a God who desires that we come to him with the broken hearts and not with lip service. He does not just want an outward appearance looking saved while you are living in sin, while you are very far from God. And that is why he's saying, rent your hearts and not your garments. That is what God is looking for. He's looking for pure worship. He's looking for true repentance. He's looking for men and women that will let God be God. Church, how long will we play religion? How long will we sit in deliverance church and we are not delivered ourselves? How long will you sit with a demonic person 
and you cannot set, get out that demon. We are tired. We cannot remain like that. Let us return to God. That when a demonic person comes by the power of God in the house, they cannot settle. They cannot sit. We shall hear demons crying, getting out of this place. We shall see sinners feeling the consuming fire of God upon their seats. They shall not be comfortable. It is our time. Let us return to God. Let us call upon his name. And he will hear us. Someone say amen. It is true repentance that God is looking for. Friends, if we will get restoration in our lives, it will be demonstrated. It will be something that will be evident. You know, when we talk about demonstration, we are saying there shall be proof. There shall be evidence. It will show out. Friends, it is a high time. People don't just see us coming and go out. We are looking for a time when there is restoration of the power of God in the church of Jesus Christ. That when you come in, the power of God is so much in this place that our neighbors will be running for that power. They'll be coming to receive their miracles. We are looking for a time men and women from far away will carry their sick and bring them to church. We are looking for a time that our shadows will just touch somebody and they get healed. Child of Jesus we need the power let the power of God be restored in the church let there be demonstration of the power of God what are we demonstrating as a people are we demonstrating our good cars it is a blessing to have a good car because God has blessed us are we demonstrating our good dressing what do people know us for? What are we showing out? Let us get tired for people just pointing out and saying that is the church of the rich. That is the church of those who know how to drive. I am here to declare I need restoration. I need the power. I need true repentance. I need the grace of God and the glory of God to come upon the church. Church, let's get tired. It is our season. That is why we are talking about restoration. Can it be demonstrated? Can it be seen in our lives? Can men and women say there is a church that knows they are God? When did you last spend time in prayer? When is that, that day you just told yourself, I want to be in the presence of God? Why should what happens in your neighborhood just happen? Why should you shift, go to a neighborhood and the cats begin running on top of your house and you say, I must shift. The demons in this place are very powerful. You need to be more powerful than a demon. A demon should not cause you to shift. You are running away from a cat. You may end up to, a, to an elephant. Look at your neighbor say, neighbor, you need power. Kama unakimbia paka. Si utatoroka na kule unaenda paka kishikana na wengine. Elephant. Friends, if you got the power of God in your life, God will work for you. It is not about who you are. It is about what God can do through you. It doesn't matter where you live, where you come from, but your relationship with God, your fellowship with God, that is what God is looking for. In the year of restoration and demonstration, may the power be restored. May the power be restored. May godliness come back to the church. Let wildness come out of our churches. We cannot continue to entertain wildness friends let them come the way they are but cause them not remain the way they are hello we will not lock them out of our gates but once they step in there needs to be enough power to receive them the way they are but not to remain the way they are and this morning I'm talking to you that you are in this place you came the way you are 
we thank God for you. But we don't want you to remain the way you are. God has enough power to transform your life. There is enough power in the church of Jesus Christ to take the church back to where God wants it. We're looking for that revival that will sweep over this nation in 2020 because there shall be men and women that have returned to God. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Let power be restored back to church. The rest of the things will come when the church is in the right place. Friends, as an individual, come back to God. What happened in the early church can happen to us. The power that was, was poured upon the early church because as we continue, the Bible says, and I will restore. This morning, be willing to be restored. Be willing because the locusts at your prayer life. The swimming locusts at your Bible study. The other locusts made sure you are never found in a fellowship and everything has been eaten. You are walking, but you don't have the power. This morning, be restored back to to God. Allow it to be demonstrated. Your lifestyle will demonstrate the goodness of God in the life, in the life that you live. The things that you do will demonstrate the power of God upon your life. Friends, it will be obvious because you are full of God. What will come out of you is what God has put there. People around you will begin to witness God in your life. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. We are living in an era. The Holy Spirit is a stranger. We are living in an era. Speaking in tongues is being primitive. I'm calling upon the body of Christ. Let us be restored back to the power. When is the last time you prayed in tongues? When is the last time you experienced the power of the Holy Spirit working upon you? The children of Judah lost it. They were judged. But thank God, he's a God of mercy. And that is why we will come to verse number 23. That is a blessing for all of us. If you can be restored back to God. Then verse number 23. Joel chapter number 2. Verse number 23. We shall be glad. Someone say I will be glad. Please throw it up for me. Someone say I will be glad. In this year of restoration. I declare over you. Once you are restored back to God. You will be glad. The children of God in Kenya, the children of God that come to Deliverance Church Umoja, you will rejoice in the Lord your God. For he is going to give you the former reign, the power you walked in, the glory that was upon your life is going to be restored again. Where does it begin? By me being restored back to God. You that is looking for a, a blessing for 2020. How will it come when the restorer is not in your life? Receive Jesus. The other things will follow. For you that has Jesus in your life. Look at how you live. See your lifestyle. Are you Christ-like? Can the glory of God be seen in your life? Where are you? And what is God doing with you? Bow your heads before the Lord. As you bow your heads, I want you to take a moment. Ask yourself a question. Am I waiting for judgment? How am I living? The children of Judah were a chosen nation to God. You are a chosen generation. You are a peculiar person. But that, does that give you a license of living the way you want to live? Are you living in a backslid instead? I want you to take a moment and make a prayer to God yourself. This is about you. This is about you. Church has become a social place. You come on a Sunday to meet friends. You come on a Sunday to mark the register. Oh God, I was in church. But sure, are you a child of God? 
Are you restored to the grace of God? Are you coming because of anything else or you are coming to worship him? The worship of God is a true worship. Talk to God. And the reason I'm telling you to talk to God is that the Bible says he is a glorious God. He is a merciful God that when we return to him, he will restore us. What does the Bible say? I want you to know, friends, as you bow your heads, if restoration will happen in your life, it will begin by you living a life that will please the Lord. It is you by coming back to the real thing. What will God do for you? He is gracious. He is merciful, slow to anger and great in kindness. This day, he can forgive you. He can have mercy over you because he loves you. The people of Judah accepted the call of Joel. The plea of Joel for repentance. For repentance and they repented. And when they repented, God responded to their repentance. God responds to us, responds, responds to us when we come back to him. Friends, it is your time, it is your season to come back to God. Make a prayer this morning. As you bow your head, just say, Lord, I'm coming back to you. Go back to the cross. We forgot about the cross. We forgot about the cross. The cross becomes shameful. And yet it is the power to our salvation. The Bible says the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But it is the power of God for those who are being saved. Friends, you need the power of the cross to get you to where you are going. You need the power of the cross to help you live a godly life. You need the power of the cross to take you back to your knees. Your knees have been tired because the power of the cross does not work in you anymore. God have mercy over the church. God remember mercy. May this be your cry. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry for the way, for the things I've made it. It's all about you. Is it, is Jesus all about your life? Remember mercy. You are a gracious God, full of kindness. Take us back to the place of worship. Take us back to the power of the cross. Church of Jesus.